If you haven't done so already, I encourage you to check out these two videos first. The first one is where I talk about life science, Rotman commerce, and computer science. And the second one is where I talk about physical and mathematical sciences, the social sciences, and humanities. This is the final video for the Simplifying the UFT Art Side Mission Categories mini-series. And in this video, I will specifically be talking about the importance of your high school courses when it comes to choosing your programs. It's actually program enrollment season right now, so I hope to share some aspects of that whole process with you, but you don't really need to worry about program enrollments and programs to study until after your first year. Anyways, let's jump into the video. When you're going into the first year admission program, which is, let's say in this example, life science, and you want to transition to the program of study that you desire. So for example, with the life science admission category, the admission category prerequisites are English and calculus. But I do want to mention this, and it's very, very important. When you're transitioning from your admission category during your first year to your program of study that you're going into for your second year, some programs of study may need you to take on additional high school courses, and it actually, is said here, programs of study may require you to take additional specific high school subjects in order to take specific courses in first year or for entry into your program of study for your second year. They use psychology as an example, so if we actually go into um, the program list, and so again, if you're interested in life sciences and you're in the life science academic stream, you may actually choose between these programs for your second year and also if you want to switch into a different program for your third year etc you may also choose any life science program on this list so if we go to undergraduate program and you go to admission requirements let's say you want to go into the psychology major and so it says here applying with less than eight fces fce stand for full course equivalents so let's say you're taking bio 120 as a life science student in your first year bio 120 is adaptation and biodiversity i'm pretty sure the majority of life science students will be taking bio 120 so you take bio 120 during your fall semester and then by 130 during your winter semester and those two usually are required for your programs of study some may require only by 120 some may require only by 130 so if you're interested in a specific program of study i encourage you to check it out using this website and there's also the U of T calendar which is right here it looks like that it will list all of the courses that you may need in order to apply for that program and also the courses that you need in order to complete the program and to be able to graduate. Going back to FCEs, FCEs again, it stands for full course equivalents. By 120 counts for a semester, so it's 0.5 FCEs. When you are a first year, you definitely have less than eight FCEs. So the maximum amount of FCEs that you can take on for each semester is actually 3.0 and so that's equal to six courses so obviously if you do the math 0.5 is for one course and if your maximum load for each semester is 3.0 maximum course load that you can take on would be six courses at the end of your first year the maximum fces that you will be able to gain would be six fces i forgot to mention this and i realized it while i was editing the video is that even though your maximum course load is 3.0 fces which is equivalent to six courses per semester recommended course load is actually five courses per semester which is equivalent to 2.5 fces so most students actually take on five courses rather than six courses per semester because they will be able to graduate on time Time, they will be able to remain as a full-time student and it's way more manageable than taking on six courses. With that being said, you still qualify as a full-time student if you are enrolled in a total of 3.0 credits in the fall winter academic year or I believe 1.5 credits in the summer session. But if you are enrolled in 2.5 credits or fewer in the fall winter academic year, then you are considered a part-time student. Also, if you're enrolled in a total of two half courses, whether that would be two courses in the spring or two courses in the summer or you choose to do one course in the spring one course in the summer or you choose to do a full year course which are all equivalent to 1.0 FCEs if you do this during the summer session you are automatically considered as a part-time student so if we do the math and this is under the assumption that you don't drop any of your courses one full year course is 1.0 FCEs and three half courses is 1.5 FCEs and then your two half courses during the winter semester would be 1.0 FCEs if we do the math that's 3.5 FCEs in total 
and because you're doing this during the fall winter term you are considered a full-time student because going back to that slide once again you are considered a full-time student if you do choose to complete at least 3.0 credits in the fall winter term. Specifically to arts and science, you have the freedom to choose how many courses you'd like to take per semester. Keep in mind that the recommended course load per semester is 2.5 FCEs, which is a five course load. But of course, I'm only an upper year student. If you are considering taking less than the recommended course load per semester, I encourage you to check out the registrar of your college, or you can also choose to go to the Faculty of Arts and Science Registrar to ask them questions about how many courses do I need to take per semester or how many courses do I need to take during this fall term and also during the winter term. And of course, if you go to the registrar, they will definitely answer all of your questions regarding course enrollment, how many courses you need to take during the fall winter term, if you need to take courses during the summer session, navigating the whole how many courses do I need to take this semester or do I drop this course or do I do I not drop this course? They will navigate those circumstances with you in consideration of your programs of study. And also they will consider whether or not you plan to complete university as a full-time student or a part-time student. And they will definitely account for all these different factors. So definitely, please, 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 please check out the registrar of your college or the Faculty of Arts and Science Registrar. Not sponsored, but definitely recommended. <laughs> So some of your FCEs may be coming from your transfer credits as well. So if you took some higher level IB courses or AP courses that gave you transfer credits, you may be able to use that for your degree. So for me, I was actually able to use my English higher level IB transfer credit. So that actually counted for 1.0 FCEs, but it depends. So it depends on what courses you took during high school and it depends on how many credits that actually equates to. It's a different website that you actually have to consult and it's this website. Essentially, it gives you a list of credits that may count towards your degree and you may be able to use them for transfer credit. If you are considering using some of your transfer credits from IB, AP or other secondary school curricula, there's a huge list right here so you may be able to get some transfer credits from those. If you're a newly admitted student, click this link. If you're a current student, click this link. There are different links so let's look here. There's a transfer credit for AP exams. You may be able to use some of your transfer credits to be able to fulfill your breath requirements. So just a quick rundown, breath requirements are required for you to complete in order to graduate. Each course is under a specific category under the breath requirements. There are five different categories creative and cultural representations, thought, belief, and behavior, society and its institutions, living things in their environment, and physical and mathematical universes. So let's say, for example, math, that would be under category five, I believe. So as long as you fulfill your breath requirements, you can graduate and you can use your transfer credits to fulfill your breath requirements for a specific category. So here's a huge list of different AP courses that you may have taken in high school and whether or not it can be used to fulfill a program requirement or your breath requirements. So there are a lot of different sites that you can go to to be able to see whether or not what you have done in high school can be used for your university degree and if they can be used as prerequisites as well. Or if you are, for example, coming from the University of Toronto Mississauga campus or Scarborough campus and if you want to go into University of Toronto St. George, there's a whole separate process in terms of that. Please consult the registrar. They will definitely help you out. They have been a tremendous help for me. They're able to answer any and all of your questions <laughs> but essentially going back to this website so when you're applying with less than eight fces if you're interested in applying for the psychology major for your second year and for your degree you need to take a psychology 100 h stands for half your course so i know for sure psychology 100 you can take it both in the fall and winter semester you need to take psychology 100 and you need to have a final mark of at least a 75 percent and if you did take ap or IB psychology, they would not accept that. So you would actually need to take the U of T psychology 100 course. So this was actually what they're talking about. In order to be able to apply for the psychology program, you need to take a grade 12 high school course in calculus and biology. And also you need to complete at least four point zero full university courses or four FCEs. So yes, you may need to take additional high school courses in order to be able to qualify and be able to apply to your programs of study during your upper years. And as a first year, this may not apply to you, but if you are an upper year, let's say after you finish your second year, you want to go into the psychology major program, then you would actually look at applying with eight 
0.0 or more FCEs completed. And depending on the program, they have different requirements. Most of the time, they do have different requirements. If you are applying with more than 8.0 FCEs, then you need to complete Psychology 201 in addition to other courses as well to be able to qualify for the psychology major program. When you are considering programs of study, you may need to take on additional high school courses in order to qualify and apply for those programs of study for your upper years and to be able to graduate. Yes, when we're talking about the admission requirements, it does say for example, for life science, you only need English and calculus, but if you want to go into a specific program of study for your upper years, then you may need to take on additional high school courses because you do need to enroll in at least one specialist or two majors or one major and two minors. And that's a totally different topic, so we're not going to go over that here. Going back to life science as an example, the admission category prerequisites are English and calculus to be able to get into the life science admission stream. But if you want to go into, let's say, psychology as a program of study for your upper years, then you may need to take biology in high school to be able to qualify for that. Or for some programs, you may need to take chemistry or you may need to take physics during high school. If you already know the program that you want to apply to or you want to check out like the different options that you have they do list in the life sciences programs list the subjects that are required in addition to english and also in addition to calculus basically so most of us in first year still take calculus courses so it's math 135 and 136 you're going to be very familiar with these course codes and we also take biology, chemistry. You may also need to take physics. It also depends on the program of study that you're looking into. But yes, so all of the programs are here. All of the courses that you may or may not need to take are here. And I encourage you to click on the link to check whether or not a specific high school course is required for the program of study that you are interested in. With that, this is the end of the video and also the end of this three-part mini-series where we talked about the U of T Art Science mission categories as well as the importance of your high school course Courses when you're choosing your programs of study after your first year. You may have noticed that my clothes do look different for the most part of the video, but that's just because I did film this material right around when I filmed the content for the second video. For those of you who are coming to UFT in the fall, I encourage you to comment down below which admission category you chose. And also, if you have a general sense of understanding about the programs of study system here at UFT, and you may have seen some of the programs that we have, I I encourage you to again comment down below which programs of study are you considering. I remember when I was in high school, I was already looking at some programs of study in the life science admission category and I actually read through the human biology program which is where I discovered health and disease and ever since high school I was very very adamant on doing a health and disease specialist so when it came to program enrollment during my first year i actually applied to the health and disease specialist which was my first choice during that program enrollment session i also got accepted into the pharmacology and toxicology major but then when i realized that that program wasn't for me i then switched to the nutritional science major the year after so this previous summer so currently i am doing a health and disease specialist and a nutritional science major. Also comment down below if you're interested in me sharing my experiences with my program so far, the courses that I've been taking, and if you're interested in the health and disease and nutritional science programs as well, I encourage you to leave a comment down below. If you're new to this channel, I encourage you to click that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you're the first one to see my next video. And with that, I hope you have a great day and a wonderful weekend. Take care, stay safe, but most importantly, stay groovy.